Hello, my name is Bob D. Hilster, and I am your particle model guru. I have re received some questions about my last video concerning inertia, so I would thought I would uh, respond to those questions. Okay, but if you're new to the particle model, I suggest you watch these two videos. The uh, particle model overview, TPM overview, and levels of the universe. These uh, two videos will give you a better understanding of each of my videos because every individual one tends to be more specific and this will give you the background you need to be able to follow me better. Okay, so this is Daniel, or these are Daniel's comments. I received three of them from him. The first comment is that he stated that there was a problem with my explanation of the wood and lead ball experiment. Second comment, he states that the velocity of a steel ball will have a higher velocity than a lead ball. And the third comment, he described inertia when a car turned or when it stopped in a very short period of time. So I want to thank Daniel for his comments and uh, let's talk about these. So here's exactly what he said in his first comment. So in your example of the lead ball and the wooden ball, there is a problem. There is no reason why the lead ball should be hit more than the wooden one. They have the same size, so they should be hit an equal amount of time. And I think he meant hit an equal number of times in, in, a, in a five second period. Well, this is the experiment I suggested uh, that we place a wood ball and a lead ball in space. We uh, set them at rest with respect to an astronaut, although all three of them could be moving at 17,000 miles an hour if they're orbiting the Earth. But we're going to set them at rest so that they're, uh, that they're uh, not moving with respect to the astronaut. The balls are, in fact, the same size, as Daniel uh, uh, points out. But the lead ball has twice the mass of the wood ball. Then apply one newton of force for five seconds to each ball. And the question is, which ball moves further and has a higher velocity? My answer is, Daniel, it's not the size. It's the density, and the density is related to mass. And this is a key point now. The size of the balls are the same. And it, and, and, and this makes the experiment more valid to do it this way. This means that each ball will have the same number of G1s trying to pass through it. So if you have the same number of passing through it, you are in effect establishing a situation where the, uh, 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 the field potential, the uh, uh, field potential of the G1 particle field is the same for each ball. Now the wood ball is less dense and therefore has more open space. It has more open space than the lead ball. Uh, it, conversely, it has uh, the targets it can hit to take a smaller cross-sectional area uh, the, uh, in the uh, in the lead in the wood ball in the uh, lead ball the space is smaller the open space is smaller and it's more likely to hit so the g1 particles hit the wood ball less than the uh, the lead ball the sustaining force or anchor is less for the wood ball and therefore is easier to move now we apply one newton of force so this this is an important point there's 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 this is a two-step test. I should have listed the sustaining force first, uh, showing that, okay, initially, just uh, sitting there at rest, uh, the wood ball has half of the sustaining force of the lead ball. And so now the astronaut applies a one newton force for five seconds. That's an external force. Not the, it's not the G1 force anymore. It's an external force trying to push both balls for the, with the same amount of force for the same amount of time. And the wood ball has half of the sustaining force as the lead ball, and it will move further 
and have twice the speed of the lead ball. So it's, it's the, uh, not the size, it's the density. Second comment, he states, what about a steel ball and a lead ball of the same size? The lead ball weighs more than the steel ball, so the steel ball will have a higher velocity. They are the same size, so the G1 field should hit both of them just as much. Well, he's making the same comment. Uh, his answer is correct. The steel ball does have a higher velocity because steel is, uh, is less dense than lead. But it's not the size, it's the density. The steel ball has more space and is being hit less than the lead ball, so the G1 force field holding the steel ball is less than the force holding the lead ball. The steel ball, yes, moves further. Daniel's third comment, as another example, when you're driving and you make a sharp turn, you feel your body pressed the opposite direction. That's inertia. Same thing when you brake very hard and you are held back in the seat by your seatbelt, that's also inertia, or when you feel yourself being pushed into the seat when you accelerate fast. That's it. He's just making a, an example. This is an example of inertia, and yes, that's true. If I'm a passenger in the car and the car is moving at a constant speed, a straight line, of course, you don't have to be exactly doing that in the car and you'll still feel the, feel the effect. Uh, but so anyway, I'm, I'm, we're riding in a car and it's moving at some speed. The G1 particle field is hitting my body from all direction. This provides forces that keep me moving in a straight line. And see, the forces want to keep me moving in a straight line and whatever speed I'm at. When the car turns left, it applies an external force pushing me left. So the car is applying the external force. The G1 forces, but in particular, since we're turning left, the left and right G1 particle, particles that generally come in those directions in an equal and opposite, applying equal, equal and opposite forces in that direction, will try to keep me going straight while the car's pulling on me left, and as a result, I feel that I'm being pushed to the right. And, and Daniel's correct, that is inertia. So my conclusion is the same as last time. The inertia, inertia is not an intrinsic property of an object that causes it to resist an external force. Theoretically, being a human being in the car, I can try to resist the motion of the car but because I'm human and I can act independently, yeah, I can resist, but an object like the lead ball and wood ball, they can't resist. An object is sustained by the force of the G1 particle field. This sustaining force keeps the object at rest or moving in a straight line with a constant speed. Hammer and feather. David Scott, the astronaut, did an experiment on the moon using a hammer and feather. My next video will discuss the results of the experiment. Well, it's really a demonstration, not an experiment. He didn't measure distance. He didn't measure time or acceleration. But it, it's pretty interesting to see the experiment. You can find a video like this at this location listed. So that's my next video. If you're new to the particle model, please view these two videos. Or just go to the particle guru and you'll see a whole, a lot of videos. I have a, quite a few videos out there explaining the particle model. My name is Bob D. Hilster. I am your particle model guru. Tune in next time when I explain more of the universe using the particle model. Thank you for your attention.